In the 11, out to a two-goal lead at halftime. We'll see both teams back on the pitch coming up in just a matter of moments. Back up to the broadcast booth to get alongside Brad Potter. Greg Rakes, we're thank you for joining us here on Wish TV and ESPN Plus. And this is what you hope for as a home fan. An early goal backed up by a second one of the own goal variety. So far, an outstanding Wednesday night for the Indy 11. Yeah, not just as a fan. You, you hope for this kind of a start as a coach as well, especially when you're looking at three games over the, the stretch of eight days and you got a game on Saturday and if if you're able to get another one and and you know put a little bit of room between the results of this game and where you're at it gives you some flexibility to maybe rest some guys or at least sit back and not have to play a full 120 minute field part of the uh, story for the Indy 11 roster rotation tonight and one of those guys that didn't play Saturday but has played very well tonight in fact he set up the first goal is Lucas Farias yeah it was great and he, he's had a couple opportunities too. that dummy ball at the top of the box to to Mac a King He's had great vision, great touch. He's, he has been what was advertised when they signed him. But it's been the guy that's been an everyday Eddie, if you will, for the Indy 11 this season in Tyler Pasher. And again, as this run of success has taken place for the Indy 11, the guy wearing number 23 has been involved somehow. Yeah, and I tell you, I just, I don't understand this play defensively from Birmingham. The hottest guy in the league right now, you turn your back to him and you follow the path of the ball. You got to just tuck back into that space and keep Tyler Pasher in front of you. Team high sixth goal of the season for Pasture that coming in minute number seven that made it one nil in favor of Indy Birmingham did have some chances this was their best one of the half yeah you talked about it in real time the positioning of Jordan Farr he puts himself in a position makes himself big on the near post and says okay you got a couple of windows if you can hit them hats off to you and then late in the half Iose the ball and again a series of deflections it may have literally touched three different Birmingham players and found its way to the back of the net yeah and anytime you send a ball into traffic in that position there's so many guys that could get a piece of it that defensively as a goalkeeper you don't know where to step you don't know where to go because it could nick off of anybody first half stats and one stat that has been constant all season long in the 11's what been winning the possession battle kind of like a margin like this most of the year yeah and you know there are times where it's purposeless sometimes you're possessing the ball and it's not resulting in anything these possessions over this stretch of success that they've had that possession has been dangerous and if the two to zero goals you saw on that stat sheet didn't tell you how well things are going for the Indy 11 they literally have more goals than shots on target you're having a good night one <laughs> shot on target for the Indy 11 and they got two goals That's out a of it. fun fact right there Rake so Martin Reddy making his way towards the sidelines will catch with coach coming up in just a matter of moments Again, the Indy 11 back here on Saturday night to take on Louisville City FC. You know, there will be a lot of folks dressed in purple making the drive up I-65 for that one. We expect a fantastic crowd. If you cannot make it down, you can watch the match the same place as you are watching it right now on both Wish TV as well as ESPN+. Plus. Looks like Martin Reddy is uh, ready on the sidelines. Coach, an outstanding opening 45 minutes. Your thoughts on the way things unfolded for your team. Yeah, it was a good 45 minutes for us. Nice and sharp. Good to get an early goal and then follow up with a good set play. Just got to make sure in the second half that we adjust a little bit in midfield and don't allow them to get out of our pressure. Uh, seeing guys and be able to rotate guys like Jahate, Farias, and King, they've all been a factor so far. Your thoughts on what those three guys specifically have done for you to this point? Yeah, all three have done well. Lucas was involved in, in the first goal. Uh, I think the others have done well as well. They've, they've put themselves about. They've shown energy, and that's what we needed tonight. Martin, thanks for the time. We'll talk to you after the match. Okay, thank you. Head coach Martin Runny, kind enough to join us during halftime of each and every match. He'll also join us during the Central Indiana Honda Dealers post-game show, and we got a few candidates of players to join us right now. And now the question is, can you find maybe a third goal and put this away early? Can you continue to keep momentum on their side as seemingly Indy has had it from the very beginning of the match? Yeah, and it's 2 nothing lead. You're comfortable, but it's a it's a it's an anxious comfort because that next goal really dictates whether there's a lot of pressure on you or whether you can sit in and relax a little bit and you know the the script has been the same during this this good run by Indy 11 it's turnovers that have led to transition have been about the only thing that has shown itself as dangerous to them and so if they can stay away from that and have the turnovers in their attacking third they can ride this game out No substitutions for either side in the start of half number two. 
in Birmingham before Saturday's game against Hartford Athletic and dropped their last five league contests. For that draw, they had lost three consecutive matches by at least a two-goal margin. They played fellow league debutants Hartford to a 2-2 draw on Saturday. They are on the road as well this coming Saturday. It is a road swing. They will make the trek up to Pittsburgh from here and take on a rapidly improving Riverhounds squad. Seemingly has found their footing now a little bit later in the season than a year ago under head coach Bob Lilly. Okay, what have they got? Seven, eight goals in their last couple games? Which, even when they were playing well last year, was about a month and a half <laughs> worth of goals yeah. for the Hounds. Does never sleep on a Bob Lilly team. Hamilton flicks it forward. Follows up the ball. Jahate won't get the pass from Inavolt. The possession returned to a team that had it for 61% of the first half. Now Inavolt tried to find Jahate, just couldn't get it through. Barrett does a good job of just getting in the way. Saw this press create some issues for the Indy 11 during the opening half. Another giveaway here again, Hoffman. And yet again, Barrett draws the foul. A quick conversation between Maka King and our match referee tonight. That is Izmir Pekovic. Read by Lopez. Yeah, and then, you know, a lot of short combinations in the same area. That brings pressure. That brings defenders to that space. At some point, you got to relieve that pressure with the bigger ball. A quick glance down towards the corner flag. To our right, see former Indiana Hoosier Femi Hollinger Jansers. Jansen starting to get loose hope to see him as the local product here in the second half of this match this portion of the match presented by the Denny companies tearing down the past so you can build the future These two teams will face each other again in September as their return date a Friday night match on September the 20th Debut squad at Birmingham Legion playing their games on the campus of UAB. I mentioned that soccer program a couple of times when Indy played the Charleston Battery. And a couple of former Blazers on their squad. Is UAB, is that where Getman's the coach? Is former Hoosier? Could be. I don't know for I know sure. He's down, I know he's down in that area. It was after uh, IU, I think he was an assistant at IU for a bit, went to Harvard, and then has been in Alabama since. Good little flick. The sun rarely sets on the Indiana soccer empire, so there are former IU guys everywhere. That, that is true. As evidenced by the Charleston Battery and Mike Anhauser in this league. I put on a national championship team for the legendary Jerry Yeagley down in Bloomington. Coach Sohn at Birmingham, what must change in half number two? Well, you got to be more impactful with those those turnovers that you're getting. You're not you're not possessing the ball. You're not holding it well. But the moments you've been dangerous have been off of those turnovers, and so those are the critical pieces to get you back into this game. Six years with DC United. Spent some time with the Vancouver Whitecaps, kind of a dual role, heading up both the front office and coaching as well. And decided in 2011 to give up those coaching responsibilities. That led to Mark Runney getting a shot in Major League Soccer. And Pasher gives the foul. Break up the counter opportunity for Daniel Johnson.
Turner. Amongst those waiting to take the restart, Cromwell. Razak Cromwell, the player you see. It'll be Johnson looking back post. Laurent. Both Farr and Ina Boltson realize that ball would take care of itself. Fans, Indy 11 Premium Suites, the perfect way to entertain your guests. Learn more at Indy11.com. Call 317-685-1100. Indy at home on Saturday. They'll next be at home on July the 20th. After that, you got to wait till August the 18th. Pasher with some space. Turns on the Jets. Jahate makes the run. Ball played behind. And Jahate had just headed towards the back post as Pasher played that ball his general direction. First time Barrett picked his pocket clean, not the second time. And a restart coming here for Legion FC and a substitution as well for Birmingham. Ryan Wright will be brought onto the mix. Wright making his ninth appearance of the season, has, a, has one goal and two assists. The player he'll be replacing will be Eddie Apoku, who probably didn't do enough with what was the best chance of the night for Birmingham. That was their heartbeat heading into halftime. You know, you look at the, the, the frustration right now. They're spending a lot of energy pressing the back line in the 11, trying to force a turnover. And the 11 are using short combinations to break that pressure. That That's really frustrating when you're spending that energy and getting no reward for it. Right on loan from the New England Revolution. Far, we'll simply let that one go. That was last struck by Kyle Fisher. Fisher recently played with the Montreal Impact where he was drafted. But Fisher missed all of last year due to an injury. And again, because of the MLS ties with guys like Sohn and Jay Heaps, lots of recent MLS products on this Birmingham squad. Asher again, once it left side. Asher plays it across. could find its way in a dangerous position to Jahate. Asher plays his ball inside, tries the right foot. He does have a right-footed goal this year. That was the wide open net against Memphis 901. But kind of going against the grain by going to the right side for Pasher. I'll tell you what, what's happening here when, when you're getting the ball out wide to Pasher, Laurent is coming with him and pressing him, and there's zero support behind him. Jahate is occupying Fisher in the middle, and Fisher's not leaving the middle. In, in this situation, you got a player like Pasher with his pace, his creativity, and how hot he is. Fisher needs to slide underneath Laurent and have Cromwell pick up Jahate. Fans for standings, stats, and all the latest league news, be sure to visit uslchampionship.com. Hoffman sucked behind the defense. But Hosman is there to pressure him yet again. That is a first world problem facing Martin Rennie coming up. When you return Neville Hackshaw, who do you take out of the lineup oh, currently? Goodness. Yeah, you could say that. You, you got Illich, you got Sterikoff. He's got problems all over the place. And again, you don't have a midweek match after this one until September. You're playing only Saturdays and Sundays. And an occasional Friday in that mix. Indy 11 do have a friendly in August. It's Detroit City from the NPSL. It's on August the 13th was done to break up a 15-day break between matches. They will have a 14-day break after Saturday's match with Louisville. They will next play at Hartford July 13th. Farias, after having an assist earlier, would like to have that one back. Had a couple of options and didn't find either one. Gibson doing a great job of just being a general pest and wins that ball off of Johnson. A second sub for Birmingham, and as we had hoped to see, the Indiana native, and I hear some cheers from the crowd. <laughs> Femi Hollinger Jansen. 
22 goals in his days at Indiana University. Spent time in the New England Revolution before coming to Birmingham. Good to see the Indiana product. And from Goshen, originally born in Africa, adopted by a family in the Goshen area, played at Bethany Christian High School. A rather small enrollment high school, like sub 200 students. But played at Indiana University, had a tremendous career with the Hoosiers. Now is a fourth year pro with Birmingham Legion. So sub 200 in the school. He probably got the start on the soccer team. You would think, yeah. yes, yeah. I think that's safe to say. Barrett the flick. It's already two of three subs now used for Birmingham. Opportunity here. Yeah, these are the tough moments. You're stretched, you got Patty Barrett up, and you turn the ball over. Hollinger, chance of looking back post. Ball never made it to him. Again, there's been good defending by the Indy 11, but there's been some inopportune decisions by Birmingham as well. Right, and, and those are the moments, too, you don't get punished for being out of shape and being stretched a little bit defensively, so that, that can lead to that happening again. The, the 11 just has to tighten it up. You, they, you don't need to get your, your backs forward at this point. Accomplish something in life when you can go by one name on the back of your soccer jersey. Your first name, Femi. What Hollinger Jansen is wearing on that 88. There's a flick by Hoffman. That's the best look he's had all night. And Farr watched it sail to the opposite side of the far post. It's a good look. Good ball in by Prosper. Nicely served right into the only pocket where Chandler Hoffman could get it. 60 goals for Hoffman during his USL days. His best work with Real Monarchs. And a foul behind the play. As Ioze goes to the turf. And Hollinger Jansen, the guilty party there. Not sure at this juncture if we will see the all time leading goal scorer in the USL Championship and Dane Kelly in tonight's matchup with Indy with a two goal advantage. He showed numbers one and three in this league's scoring history before tonight's game. And Dane was part of the goal a couple of weeks ago against Loudoun United, but that was later and I think correctly ruled as an own goal against Loudoun. Jahate is on side, but the pass is off target. Aliou trying to make it two goals in as many matches. Osmond again fantastic with the read. Spell Kenny Walker tonight. Kenny's available as a substitution. And is trying to rotate through the lineup a little bit. It's a great ball by Patty Barrett. Just roll out of play. Talked about this numerous times, but a reminder next home match for the Indy 11 is a big one. Louisville City FC rolls into town on Saturday night. Blue City is off tonight. They'll be a little more rested than will Indy. 7 o'clock kickoff time. You can watch it right here on Wish TV and ESPN+. Plus. It's a good find by Patty Barrett, finding Ina Voltson underneath the front three. The flick by Ina Voltson. Farias, Jahate. Jahate just couldn't get the right look. But Ina Voltson is there. Jose and Pasher, pick your poison. Ina Voltson tries to bend it through, couldn't get through. Jahate went down, but you're not going to get the call kind of going away from goal, especially with a two goal lead. And now 4v4. Onside, guess who? Osmond yet again. What a read. But not cleared yet. Kasim couldn't get it through Barrett. Corner coming. 
for Birmingham Legion in the 61st minute. That's a good little move by Kasim. Kasim does have three goals this year. He and Hoffman lead this Birmingham club. I'll tell you, it's, it's this kind of stuff. It's counters and restarts that can get them back into the game. Hoffman makes it a short corner. Now Kasim looking to make the turn. Sliding effort by Farias. Laurent steers it in. And Wamet knocks it some 20 yards down the pitch. With this portion of this match presented by Community Health Sports Medicine. Dream big, work hard, and finish strong. by Osmond. Oh, well done. By far or by Osmond? Uh, by far. There you go. Given Mitch's reaction to putting his head in his hands immediately. <laughs> he nearly did get that first professional goal going in the wrong direction here. I'll tell you what, that's, that's, a, tough, that's a tough ball to be ready for. And he handled it cleanly. Jahate gives chase. Fisher got there first. Jahate gets there next. He Here's Enavolts. Doesn't quit on anything. Pasher to his left. Pasher. A touch. Looking back for Enavolts. Afarius. And clear Cromwell. In the 11 might be being a bit too unselfish. Oh, some of their I, looks I, on I goal. Think, I think Jahate wanted it on his right foot. He needed to either pull the trigger with his left or keep that ball moving. And here's an opportunity. And Barrett did just enough to throw him off. That's the professional foul right there. Just a little bit of the hip turn to slow things up. And if there's one thing, again, you, you look at tonight and say you still have to improve that, it's those turnovers in midfield. Too many of those probably for Martin Rennie's liking. And the problem with it too is, you know, you're not getting punished on them. So it doesn't become one of those burning memories that that says, okay, we gotta we gotta address that. And what has become standard operating procedure, Matt Watson about to enter this match for the Indy 11. He has become their frequent first sub off the bench this year. Tyler Pash will be the player that will be exiting off in Watson's stead. And that's a bit of a conservation move, knowing you got to play on Saturday night as well. Three by Laurent. It back. Now Lopez. Barrett is there. Well done by Indy. Yeah, Chandler Hoffman did everything he could to hold Patty Barrett off that ball. How about that sliding takeaway by that's, Laurent? That's impressive. Kasim couldn't get it past King. Arias gives chase, but runs out of real estate to track that one down before the restart. Here comes Matt Watson to the contest. So Tyler Pasher will exit his sixth goal of the season, coming in minute number seven. He made the bench for the team of the week in the USL this past week with the assist that set up the winner by Jahante. He has staked his claim to another potential award with the goal tonight. He will exit, and that's simply to save mileage for Saturday night for Pasher. Tonight was the 14th league match out of 15 that Pasher has appeared in. Ball sent in, and not close to a threatening ball that time from Cromwell. 
Get updates and alerts all year long by following your club at ESPN.com. Search for Indy 11th and click the follow button to keep up with the latest news and scores. Plus, get reminders on the 11th next match. Go to ESPN.com now and click follow for more on your club. Build up here yep. for the Indy 11. Yeah, good build, good patience, good spacing. Possession is your friend with a two goal lead in the 67th minute. And it's it's so frustrating when you're trying to defend this. Nina Boltson didn't get the touch he wanted, but Jahate able to settle. That's how it is when you're on a hot streak. You know, Jose left foot did not hit it as well as he would like. Yeah, you have a touch that. Is it the one you wanted? And it winds up going right to one of your players. Iose looking for his first goal of the season. This portion of this match presented by Delta Fawcett. Delta Fawcett, see what Delta can do. Osmond again. Go back to <laughs> Gibson being fouled. He still got through. Martin Rennie's left, Juan Guerra. First year out of playing for Juan after playing for the team. So offered the role of being a player assistant coach and said, I think I'm ready to get the coaching full time. My guess is he's a head coach in the not too distant yeah, I, future. Yeah, I love everything about that. One, you know, that Martin asked him, and that speaks to, you know, when you spend a year, and you know, they've known each other, but you spend a year in the locker room with the guy, and you ask him to be part of your staff. It's because they don't misstep at all. Good hustle by Birmingham. Nice to let that ball go to the sideline for a throw in. concerned right now for the Indy 11. No, and you can see with the substitution of Watson for Pasher that he's taken on a bit more of a defensive role. Instead of playing up high, he's tucked back in, and they're content to let Jahate stay up front and see if they can find him. And Jahate is on the island at this point for the Indy 11. Opportunity here. Hoffman looking to make the turn left foot, and again, far is there. It's a great turn. It's this great portion turn. of this match presented by the Indiana Economic Development Corporation. Indiana, a state that works. Who's working right now is Jordan Farr for the Indy 11. Tell you what, you love Mitch Osmond's reaction on that. He got he turned, gives up a shot. There's no goal, no harm done. He's still angry. He's still angry that he let that happen. Love that. Mitch is trying to work his way into being the most famous athlete from tiny Rio Grande College. He's got a ways to go, though. A gentleman named Bevo Francis, back in the 50s, scored 100 113 points, 13 points in a college basketball game at Rio Grande. And you thought I wouldn't know that. I thought you wouldn't know that. You can set the headphones down. I'll take it from here. Thank <laughs> you very much. <laughs> and I guarantee you thought I wouldn't know that. And I didn't. I didn't. 
didn't. Bill Wagner texted me this information. It was the SID at DePaul University, so by the way. I cheated in my trivia. I got Bevo and Bob Evans in on the same broadcast. We can go home now. I'll tell you, there's going to be a statue of you in that town. There's probably a statue of me and Bob Evans already. <laughs> Throw in coming here by Laurent. Jahate the target. Iose. Veteran move. <laughs> when, when that, before that ball came to Iose for his first touch, he knew what was going to happen. Yep. He was just waiting for this first step from Femi, and then boom. As soon as you feel contact, reflect said contact. <laughs> Jose, his second year with the Indy 11. He's got the previous four years with the New York Cosmos in the native of Spain. And it's a familiar refrain that Brad and I have said multiple times over the last two years. We always knew how good of a player Jose was as an opponent. We had no idea how good of a player he was until he put on an Indy 11 uniform. So many of the things that he does are so subtle. But yet so skilled. And then you, you, you stack him under someone like Pasher. They missed time in a couple of different stints so far this season. This is his 11th start in 15 matches. Missed the first couple of matches of the year. Missed a couple early in this month of June. Give and go between Watson and Iose. Jahate couldn't find the angle to shoot. Ina Bolson, no such problem. Heads up at the BYB. Love it. Love it. I really like in, in some matches when Ina Voltson, you know, plays just just behind the front. And he's he's a playmaker, he sets them up, but then he also just kind of lurks into that area waiting for a ball like that. Fans, the USL recently unveiled its elite youth program, USL Academy. This allows clubs at all levels across the USL to develop its local youth to compete at the highest level across the United States, including the USL Academy Cup. For more information, visit uslsoccer.com slash academy. Macaulay King's night is done, and it will run for Kenny Walker here at the end of this match. Looks like a third substitution is not too far away from joining the fray for Birmingham Leach. We'll get that to you when he reports the fourth official. Johnson looking back post. And sends that one past everybody. Farias does a good job of shepherding that ball across the touchline. And really, since that seventh minute with Pasher's goal, Birmingham has had to chase this game. They've spent a lot of energy trying to trying to press, trying to get those turnovers that they have to go with this this third sub right now just to keep some fresh legs. If if they've got a chance in this game, they have to force something now. Giveaway by the Indy 11. But eventually Fari is able to clear the danger zone. Walker, the first touch. Was last year's leader in assists playing into this year's leader in assists. Walker with four heading into tonight's match. This portion of this match presented in part by Ivy Tech. Careers start here. Apply for free at ivytech.edu. Laurent plays that ball to the side for an Indy 11 throw in. By the way, the player that will be entering momentarily for Birmingham Legion. Dago Kobayashi. Veteran reserve for Birmingham. Kobayashi appearing in his 13th match this season when he reports to the fourth official. The flick by Ina Bolton. Kasim will beat Farias to it. And we'll turn it over to Matt Van Ockel for a goal kick. No 
goals, but two assists this year for Birmingham. direction is a win with a two goal lead keep it in that defensive third throw-ins goal kicks you're fine with that every one of those is 10 15 throwing us up 30 seconds Kobayashi 36 years of age from Japan replace replaces Turner Kobayashi was with the Las Vegas lights a season ago he was a veteran presence for guys like Jay Heaps and Tom Sohn. This time with the New England Revolution. Spent some time with the Vancouver Whitecaps in 2013. Yet another tie to Indy 11 head coach Martin Running. Kasim makes a supporting run. Farias is kind of late to catching it. Kasim went to the ground, does not get the whistle from our referee. Ball finds Ina Boltz and just couldn't get the right touch on it. Jahate would have had a chance on goal. So Birmingham has used up their complement of substitutions. He still has one more they could make. And again, maybe you try to get a few minutes at the end for Ilya Illich just to try to get him some run, knowing he hasn't played since March. Yeah, it all depends on where he's at. If, yep. you, if you get that green light from the training staff that says, hey, he's, he's about ready to return, and you know, here, here's a situation where you're pretty much navigating the game. You don't need him to be chasing down and sprinting down 50-yard balls over the top. This portion of this match presented in part by Honda Manufacturing of Indiana, official automotive sponsor of the Indy 11. Touched by Iose. Happens maybe a couple times a year. Shark that. I thought like Johnson. I think he's done a nice job in the middle of the field. He's worked like crazy, pulling the ball off the back line, pulling it off the right, moving it from one side to the other. Great tackle by Farias. Johnson, a 23-year-old from Duluth, Georgia. Giveaway here by Watson. Lopez looking from long distance, but not a threatening ball. And that's a sign of frustration. The last three shots that they've taken have been from 30, 35 yards out when they really need that extra effort to try and break the lines, see if they can get in and get a good opportunity against Jordan Farr. Fans, you can tune to ESPN3 next Wednesday, July 3rd at 11 o'clock Eastern time. The next edition of Wednesday Night Soccer. Watch as two of the premier clubs of the Western Conference duel for playoff positioning. Sacramento Republic FC and the Fresno Foxes. Offside flag, it goes up for Femi Hollinger Jansen. Sacramento Republic FC and Fresno FC. It's the Highway 99 Derby. Catch all the action July 3rd, 11 o'clock on ESPN3. Hollinger Jansen has neither a goal nor an assist, and this is 11th appearance of the season. has played out of bounds is and, and gotten to the ball first in the air. I was thinking about all the young talent that we've seen from Indiana University in this league over the course of this season. Reese Buckmaster with Red Bulls 2. Of course, Andrew Gutman on loan from Celtic with the Charlotte Independents. A couple of young players we yet didn't see when North Carolina FC was here in early May. Austin Poncho, Timmy Mel. That has been... The faucet has been turned on as far as talent is concerned in Bloomington for a long time, especially the last four or five years. Ina Boltson 
eventually draws the foul on Kobayashi. Free kick coming here. And this had been built up over a period of time. <laughs> yeah, and it's, he had had enough right there. And did well not to pursue that any further. Walker, maybe going for goal here, or is a setting someone up? Looks like this is gonna be Kenny Walker's ball. He connected for about 45 last year while playing in Cincinnati on a volley. Connected for about 20 or so yards out on his lone goal this season. A couple of weeks back. Walker, able to slide it through, but a dangerous moment out of that one. Give away by the Indy 11. That's two and a half for Iose. Late whistle. He thought he got the ball first, and for his reaction, he's going to get a card out of that. And Thomas has no problem showing his emotions while on the field for the Indy 11. Former member of the Danish World Cup team back in 2010. Let's take a look. And I tell you, you look, at, you look at his face, you look at his body language, you never question what's in his heart and his head. He oh, shows he, it on he, his sleeve, on his face. He's, his give a darn meter is quite high, is it not? <laughs> so both he and Mitch Osmond picked up a yellow tonight. For Ina Boltson, that is his first yellow of the season. leader in yellows this year is Patty Barrett. He's got three, and of course, two of those came in about eight minutes against Tampa Bay back on May 1st. Good flick forward. Flag goes up. Hoffman was just a touch offside. Hoffman from Montgomery, Alabama, but played his junior soccer in Birmingham. We'll take a look as the flag went up, and that's well done by Barrett. Just stopped and immediately looked to the assistant referee and Properly called offside to and, Barrett. And, and even though it didn't develop into a shot, well played by Jordan Farr. He came out, he had himself set in the right position. Now, when Hoffman looked over his shoulder, he saw that Farr was out, and he decided instead of the early, just quick one touch shot, I'm going to have to turn it and try and beat him back post. Wherever you go, you can take the boys in blue with you. Download the all-new Indy 11 app in the Apple Store or get it on Google Play. You watch the smart play by Osmond here as they're possessing the ball. He's dropping deep, 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 giving everybody an opportunity to relieve pressure if they get in trouble. Carl Wimet entered this lineup because of that Double yellow we referenced by Patty Barrett on May 1st. Basically hasn't left the lineup since. The 11 haven't lost since. Ina Boltson gets taken down. Wow, Ball is still free. Now. <laughs> and I would tend to agree with Thomas. Oh, he played that great. He played it great. He used his body to shield that ball on two bounces to get it to wind up at his feet at the top of the box, was dragged down and didn't get the call. I don't think that was an intentional take. I think that was a stumble. But the end result should have been the same. Take a look here. This is just brilliantly played. I think there was enough for Laurent's arm on him. 
I would tend to agree. By the way, at the other end, we bet was fouled. So while we were showing that replay, he didn't miss much of anything. here at half number two. Possession has been nine-tenths of the law for the Indy 11 here at half number two with a two-goal lead the entire way. Indy 11 looking for their first two-goal home victory of the season. They've all been one-goal wins or nil-nil draws here at Lucas Oil for the Indy 11 this season. The easier results for India, frankly, but on the road this year. And the Legion are out of gas. They've spent 86 minutes pressing that ball all over the field. That They've got a little bit of, of energy to get some pressure to the ball, but as soon as any Indy breaks it, their body language just says it's over. Nina Boltson wants one. Nina Boltson. Long distance. Given the anger with which he's played the last minutes, you knew that wasn't leaving his yeah. foot. But then it's, it's, he's he's shooting it from 30 yards out. It goes wide, and then he's he's frustrated. He's lifting his jersey up, and he's still angry. I love this passion on a ball from 30 yards out that he's got no business hitting. mentioned last broadcast one of three Indy 11 players to have appeared in a World Cup match Cleverson from 2014 Gerardo Torado in 2016 and 2017 also a part of that group by the way our final five minutes plus stoppage time brought to you by your central Indiana Honda dealers official automotive sponsor of the Indy 11 Watson has Ina Boltson hanging out back post. Please find Ina Boltson. Couldn't get it to him, headed away. Watson tries him again. Ina Boltson's last goal came against Memphis 18 days ago. He wasn't exactly taken to the corner flag to kill time there. He's trying to find a way to get on frame. Good pressure by Lopez. Slides it forward for right. Osmond with him step for step. Brilliant. Brilliant. Mitch Slater to be one of our post-game guests at this juncture. Opportunity here. Kobayashi for Kasim. Kasim the left foot. It's a well-struck ball. The buildup has been there, just not the final on-goal opportunity for the Legion tonight. Yeah, and I tell you, you know, I, 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 I'm so impressed with Mitch Osmond on that play. You know, you've got your your back line is stretched, a little bit out of position. The textbook sometimes says, take the foul. Take the Instead, he stands him up, closes off any option that he's got, gets the throw, and everybody gets back and recovers. And maybe he can't take the foul because of having the early yellow card, too. That might be in the back of his mind there. Expect to see Neville Hackshaw back here on Saturday, but not sure we'll see him in the lineup. Playing his final game for the Gold Cup with Trinidad and Tobago this evening. In the last four weeks, it has been we met Barrett and Osmond. They have been fantastic. They've allowed one goal during that time. As that trio is when Matt goes to the turf. Stay tuned, we will have the Central Indiana Honda Dealers postgame show. Coming up following the game.
Watson the lead for Jahate. Now Watson lays it across for Farias. Watson couldn't get it on his feet. And the Indy 11 are going to go a different direction with their third and final sub. They're going to get a young man his first experience at this level. Emerson Nieto is going to be the final sub tonight. Get just a little bit of time on the pitch this evening. He is the third academy player on the roster for the Indy 11, joining Mario Perez and Josh Penn. Ina Bolson for Jahate. Jahate couldn't get it past. Ina Bolson taps it in. There we go. There's the hard work rewarded for Thomas. Ina Bolson, a fourth goal of the season for Thomas. Third of the night for the Indy 11. And it's all three points. And now a flat-footed tie for the Tampa Bay Rowdies atop the Eastern Conference. And I'll tell you what, a great effort by Van Opel. Just a great effort just to get a hand to that ball. And it is our West Fork Whiskey shot of the game. West Fork Whiskey, Indiana's premier whiskey distillery. So Ina Bolton joins Kelly and Pasher with at least four goals this season. And it wasn't for lack of effort for Matt Van Okel, as you said. That was just the relentless pursuit demonstrated by Thomas Ina Bolton. So Aliun Jahate will exit for the Indy 11. Emerson Nieto will make his Indy 11 debut. Substitution for your Indy 11. So Nieto joins Josh Penn as players that are still here on an amateur basis. Getting a chance to feature for the Indy 11 this season. by Johnson he picked his head up he saw that Femi was offside instead of sending him in he pulled that back and looked to possess it Kasim the left foot not there closed down well by Farias you think Kasim probably wanted that ball to drop just a little bit more is necessary. The Indy 11 scored early, they scored late, and they controlled from the jump. They are now tied atop the Eastern Conference standings for the Tampa Bay Rowdies, and they have an Eastern Conference high 10th win of the season. I'll tell you what, I was thinking that Ina Bolton scoring that goal was going to relax him a little bit. Right after the game, he goes up and he's talking to the official and pointing to the different spots where the official missed the call. Tyler Pasher, his sixth goal of the season. The Indy 11, a fifth consecutive win for the first time in franchise history. Final thoughts when we come back here on Wish TV and ESPN Plus.